The movie Tommy Boy shows the plights of a new salesperson trying to learn how to sell. And there's lots of comedy in here, but there's also lots of uh, hidden lessons. So the late Chris Farley plays Tommy Callahan Jr., who's really an immature, clumsy, and irresponsible heir to his father's auto parts factory, which has been in the family for generations. The first lesson in the movie that sales managers can learn is not accepting excuses. Richard Hayden, played by David Spade, is Tommy's dad's right-hand man. When he goes to the local airport to pick up Tommy, who is on his way back from college, in usual fashion, Tommy arrives on an afternoon flight. The only problem was he was supposed to arrive in the morning flight. Richard Hayden? Tommy. <laughs> so where's my dad? I thought he was going to meet me at the airport. He was at the airport this morning, but you weren't on the plane. He said he had a surprise for me. Maybe. I guess you should have called. I did call earlier when using the phone. Earlier when was that? Or later when then I uh, le left a message. A message? What number did you call? Two, four, nine or five. Six, seven, eight. I can't hear you. You're trailing off. And did I catch a niner in there? Were you calling from a walkie-talkie? No, it was cordless. Mm -hmm. You know what? Don't. Not here. Not now. So as you just saw, Richard walks Tommy through some questions that clearly shows that Tommy was just making up excuses for missing the morning flight. Richard does a great job holding Tommy responsible for his actions. As a sales manager, you owe it to the company, your team, and the people that make excuses to hold them accountable. So don't accept excuses. On the trip, we learn the second lesson of the movie. Richard uses his time in the car for pre-call planning with Tommy. He starts the conversation by saying, let's review. Hey, Tommy, this is not a vacation for me. I'm out here against my will, so the least you can do is pretend to work, okay? Now let's review. Okay, you're right. Review time, let's do it up. Feed me. First, what are the three grades of Callahan brake pads? Um, personal, commercial, and, uh... Agricultural. And what is our carrying charge for all the merchandise in the warehouse? Oh, man. One and a half. Half percent. I knew that. Why can't I remember it? Try an association. Like, uh, let's say the average person uses 10% of their brain. How much do you use? One and a half percent. The rest is clogged with malted hops and bong resin. As you saw, Richard asked a series of questions to prepare for the calls that day. It's best practice to prepare a pre-call plan for every customer you're going to call on. Your pre-call plan should include commitment objectives slash next steps, review of customer information, review of any competitive information, solutions to identified needs, questions you want to be sure you ask, meeting agenda, the presentation, and any collateral materials. Your sales calls will go smoother when you take some time up front to plan for them. The third lesson learned is no isn't always final unless you let it be. Just before they go into each call, Richard reminds Tommy, remember, it's sales time, so we don't take no for an answer. Uh, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm ready. Hey, does this suit make me look fat? No, 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 your face does. Okay, let's check you out. All right. <laughs> it's a clip, Ma. Hi, are you sure? Yeah. All right, now, it's sale time. So remember, we don't take no... No shit from anyone. No. Uh, we don't take no prisoners. We don't take no for an answer. Oh, yeah. We don't take no for an answer. Yeah. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. No. Okie dokie. No. Gotcha, thanks. Mm -mm. Terrific. Thanks for your time. As you saw in the clip, his actions mirror that of many sales representatives who take an initial no as the final no and never call on the customer again or never delve a little deeper to see why they said no. We also need to teach persistence. Statistics from the National Sales Executive Association show 2% of sales are made on the first contact, 3% are made on the second contact, 5% are made on the third contact, 10% of sales are made on the fourth contact, and 80% of all sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact. So if you're walking out after the first or second time and giving up on a prospect, you're never going to close the sale, or very rarely. So you need to make sure that you're taking the time and developing a plan to follow through. And that's really what the commitment objectives do, is help you go from step to step to make sure that you have 
the correct number of calls or increase your chances of closing the sale. The fourth lesson comes on the fourth call of the day when a customer finally says, maybe. Let me say, maybe. Well then, I'd just like to add that the spectrometer readout on the nickel cadmium alloy mix indicates a good rich strobe and fade, decreasing incidence of wear to the pressure plate. If you could just... Whoa, little fella, you're not speaking my language. What my associate is trying to say is that uh, our new brake pads are really cool. You're not even going to believe it. Like, um, let's say you're driving along the road with your family, and you're driving along, la la la, woo. And then all of a sudden, there's a truck tire in the middle of the road, and you hit the brakes. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> now let's see what happens when you're driving with the other guy's brake pads. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden, the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy. Not now, damn it. Truck tire. I can't stop. Oh, help. help. There's a cliff. Oh, and your family's screaming, oh my god, we're burning alive! No, I can't feel my legs! In comes a meat wagon! Wee -hoo, wee -hoo, wee -hoo. And the medic gets out and says, oh my god! New guy's in the corner puking his guts out! <laughs> All because you want to save a couple extra pennies. And <laughs> to me, it doesn't get out. Now! As you can see, Tommy got overly excited and ruined the sale by destroying some of the purchaser's model cars, trying to show the difference between Callahan and the competition. We as sales managers need to train our salespeople to act as if they've been there. They need to be confident when they sell our product. Later that day, Tommy describes his failure to a waitress. He does that after she says that the kitchen's closed and they can only serve cold food. I'll have chicken wings. Kitchen's closed until dinner. Just got cold stuff and desserts. Boy, some chicken wings would really hit the spot. You sure it's closed? Let me check. Yep, it's closed. Okay, I'll just have a sugar packet or two. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Helen. That's nice. You look like a Helen. Helen, we're both in sales. Let me tell you why I suck as a salesman. Let's say I go into some guy's office. Let's say he's even remotely interested in buying something. Well, then I get all excited. I'm like, Jojo, the idiot circus boy with a pretty new pet. The pet is my possible sale. Oh, my pretty little pet. I love you. So I stroke it, and I pet it, and I massage it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love my little naughty pet. You're naughty. And then I take my naughty pet, and I go... <laughs> <laughs> Oh! I killed it! I killed my sale! <laughs> That's when I blow it. That's when people like us have got to forge ahead, Helen. Am I right? God, you're sick. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll go turn the fryers back on and throw some wings in for you. Hey, thanks, Helen. Tell me likey. Tell me want wingy. Now, as you can see in that past clip, Tommy did that by building rapport. And a sales manager should be training their employees about the importance of building rapport. As you can see, when Tommy built rapport, he got the wings. So really what he did is he built a personal connection with the waitress. So when you build personal connections, you are much more likely to get a sale. So right after that scene comes the sixth lesson from the movie. And that's when Richard does a post-call review. And post-call reviews are really helpful for you to determine what went right and what went wrong. So we'll go ahead and play the movie clip now. Did that board of the head knock something loose? What are you talking about? That 180 you just pulled with the waitress. Why can't you sell like that? I was just having fun. If we didn't get the wings, so what? We still got that meat lover's pizza in the trunk. Hey, you got the wings because you were relaxed. So you had confidence. And that's what it takes to sell. Confidence. Your dad had that. Uh, why do you always have to deep turd these things? My dad was smart. I'm not. Very true. But there's two types of smarts. 
book smarts, which waved bye-bye to you long ago, and there's street smart, the ability to read people. And you know how to do that, just like your dad. He was the best at knowing what people wanted to hear and what people needed to hear. That's what selling is all about. In a way, these people are buying you, not just brake pads. Hey, everybody, it's Tony Robbins. <laughs> Maybe you're right, Richard. I think I am. So when sales managers are traveling with their representatives or even on the phone, they really should review the calls and the sales rep should be doing that on their own as well. We need to make sure that we look at each call and determine what went right and what went wrong. As you saw in the movie clip, he let Tommy know what he did right so he could use that skill more frequently. So in the movie, eventually Tommy did learn to sell and he did sell enough to save the company. I would recommend though, if you haven't seen the movie to see it, and if you haven't seen it in a while, you probably should watch it again. It's a good laugh and something that is really timeless. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel.